Oh my gosh, that's an ugly slide. Welcome to the worst Prezzo ever. A wacky, fun lesson plan that I've come up with over a couple of years. My name is John Carippo. Hey, a lot of times when you go to the computer lab, it you know kind of looks like this. It's kids in rows. Uh, they're not really jacked about work going to the computer lab because what happens is uh, sometimes it takes a whole quarter to learn an app. Uh, so this is a fast, quick start, fun lesson plan. And I'm going to give you a couple different ways to uh, start up your year. I think you really enjoy this. Uh, this is a fun lesson plan. It teaches fast tech skills as fast as two periods. Your kids will show dramatic skill growth. Um, it jump starts their presentation skills because they don't have a week to worry and wonder about their presentation. Uh, we're just going to throw them into the deep end of the pool and laugh and have a good time. Um, it builds collaboration skills. Um, you got people working in groups, uh, kind of breaking down barriers a little bit, but yet everybody's uh, ind independently uh, accountable at the end. And then it gets students thinking quick projects. Uh, you're really setting the pace in your classroom for things that get wrapped up quickly. A nice tight time frame, and then we get her done, and they get feedback right away. Um, students, you have them get ready to take notes. Now they can take notes on a paper pen, which is totally acceptable. You can use things like Evernote if you're a little ahead of the curve there, and then uh, something like Drop could be used. Uh, anything where the kids can take uh, notes. Uh, one angle is if you're running iOS 9, uh, that works great for iPads. Uh, you can draw little sketch notes right on your iPad. So there will be note taking coming up as part of the lesson with the kids here. Um, next, I found this video literally uh, nine years ago, eight years ago, I think, a long time ago. Oh, don't don't date me on that, but a long time ago. And uh, it, basically, this the stand-up comedian Don McMillan. Uh, it's the videos on YouTube, and this guy goes through and makes oh, I don't know, eight or nine really bad slides. And uh, you can watch this video on YouTube. And then you're going to show it to the kids. As the kids are watching, you're going to have them pause and take notes. So when you see most common PowerPoint mistakes, and this one is the too many bullets slide, pause the video, have the kids take some notes about what they should not do. Uh, when he does effectiveness during, uh, versus data, which is uh, really hilarious where he puts about 50 charts on the screen and talks about how it's less readable the more stuff you add, so most people add more stuff. And then another example is animation versus effectiveness. So having kids just playing with animations and goofing around to distract the audience. So you're going to take notes on on uh, uh, each one of the significant parts that Don takes a break on. Now the kids can work together to design their own bad slides. Uh, but each each student builds their own slide deck. And what you're going to give them for, for a subject is something they like or dislike. And that could be pets, sports, foods, bands. A food you like, a food you don't like. But you're going to do the world's worst PowerPoint or the world's worst Prezzo on one of those things. You only get to break one rule per slide. This is important to sort out with kids, watch the different rules they're breaking. If you have them break five rules on a slide, it gets so bad that it's now uh, basically useless because it's all a jumble. So I only let them break one rule per slide. And then they have to break at least five of the rules, which means their presentation should have five slides. Um, and they need to list the rule being broken on the slide. Uh, so now one of the next things, uh, one of the next questions I'm going to get is, oh, well, John, what, what platform, uh, how, what app are we using? Well, it really doesn't matter. You can use Keynote, you can use PowerPoint, you can use Google Slides. Any of those is fine. Anything that makes slides is acceptable. And, you know, I'm going to just wander around the classroom helping kids on the fly. I'm not going to teach them how to do animations. I'm not going to teach them how to put in bullets. I'm going to let them work in little groups and I'm going to let them fail. And I'm going to go around the room helping them in small groups. I'm not going to teach them in a big group because what happens in a big group is one third of the kids already know and you're insulting them. Uh, one, of the, one third of the kids might get it but might need another rep. And then one third of the kids, uh, they don't care at all. So you're going to have to help them later anyways. So my logic is just tell them do these things and then move around the room and uh, help them work through those. And they're, they're only building five slides. So this should really be a fast build. This should be something like... Uh, 20 to 35 minutes. You could probably make the whole presentation of the lesson and the building of the slides uh, one class period if you're in a 55 minute model. And then the second class period, we got some more fun stuff coming. So you have the kids save their slides when they're done. And then everybody's going to present. And you're only going to give them three minutes to present. And you can even chop that down to two minutes and 30 seconds or two minutes. Because frankly, this is not a formal presentation. It's just kids getting in front of the room and having a good time. So um, put a real hard clock on them. Put a timer. 
no, nothing over your set time. You can do the math however you like, but that really creates some intensity too because uh, you know there's a timer involved and people can't just go and go and go. Now the next bit I like to do is I have student feedback. So when we get to the point where uh, the kids are, are ready to present, I will get two or three or four kids out of the audience and I'll put them at, at the front of the room across from the presenter and I'll call one of them Randy and one of them can be uh, uh, Ryan Seacrest and, and they can each get a little different role. And you can do this on paper or you can do it with like a Google form or uh, sometimes even a Kahoot if you want to get a little crazy. But basically the kids are going to give feedback to the kids on their quick three minute presentations. And this really makes it social and, and it gives the voice to the students. So the kids are talking to the kids about the stuff. And remember, we're not dealing with academic items on this first activity. This is just strictly fun stuff, favorite bands, favorite pets, favorite foods, stuff that all the kids can, can uh, collaborate on and, and connect with. So it's a really fun thing uh, to let the kids give them the feedback and then you play the role of the moderator and your job is to kind of float around the classroom and that's that's why I say my my role is to be Ryan Seacrest I'm I'm there to help support the student that's presenting I'm there to help uh, explain when there's a mistake or error and and the significance and the fix for that but wait there's a plot twist ahead this is the thing you don't tell the kids until it's too late they're gonna present somebody else's slides and that makes it really funny because the kid is gonna have the presenter kid is gonna have trouble they're gonna not know exactly what somebody meant on some slides it makes it really chaotic and uh, I will tell you that uh, when we did these at Minarets High School uh, Jamie Smith uh, language arts teacher there at Minarets when she was doing this you have never heard kids laughing so hard and enjoying each other um, on their presentations and and really letting the guilt go that it it is supposed to be a bad presentation but what the kids are really learning in that backwards uh, teenage mind is that they're embracing the wrongness so they can appreciate the rightness so um, you know hilarity ensues you establish the tempo that we're gonna do these things quickly and really you're embracing the four C's right because the students are collaborating the students are communicating a lot there's a lot of talking going on a lot, uh, along the lines of what the technical bits uh, are and what's good and what's bad and what's right and you know there'll be a couple of kids every time that do something really really over the top creative and it's so cool to see the rest of the class kind of get on on the bandwagon with that and they, they, they'll start asking that student how did you do that so I think this is also a really good lesson plan to play with with establishing the four C's in your classroom lesson design um, you're gonna see a lot of creativity you're gonna see a lot of communication the kids are gonna be collaborating when they get stuck and uh, the critical thinking bit is it, you it, it's not as strong in this because it's kind of a fun wacky lesson but you can always have the kids um, or the students make a what if they made a serious slide deck afterwards about what they learned in the fun slide deck now now you can start bringing in some critical thinking skills um, another example would be if they could they can do a blog article or write about um, their learnings and that could be fully academic so it's a chance to give kids uh, another way to explain their skill set now I got a couple of uh, sequels for this fun activity one of them is called Petcha Flicker now, once kids have done this, if you're in a classroom where your one of your goals is to get kids presenting better, Pecha Flicker is hilarious. Um, basically, Pecha Kucha or Pecha Kucha, depending on how you pronounce it, is uh, it's a game where kids, uh, where adults get together and they do 20 slides on a 20 second interval. So the slide advances every 20 seconds. Well, if you go to Pecha Flicker on the internet, you can put in four slides for five seconds each, or 10 seconds each, or 20 seconds each. And if you type in dog, you're going to get random dog related pictures. It may not be of a dog. It may be of something reminiscent of a dog. And it's a really, really, really fun way to get kids speaking extemporaneously and being better on task. Because again, there's this high failure rate. There are going to be issues. Uh, there are going to be problems. There are going to be things that are unexpected. Um, but it's it's being done in a fun and creative way. So that's that Petcha Flicker is a is a really really fun site. And then one other sequel uh, is a, a thing I'm calling Iron Chef. I've been calling it Iron Chef for oh, about seven or eight years now. And uh, we we take some of the elements of the worst Prezo ever 
and we use them to do academic things. So if you can imagine the good old uh, Freyer model or the good old Jigsaw, imagine that kids have this fast build capability. Now you can just roll into class and say, I want you guys to tell me about Thomas Jefferson, and you each have 10 minutes to build one slide. Well, one student might be summarizing his life, one student might be uh, finding four or five primary documents. One student might be talking about uh, key debates or battle, uh, you know, political battles that he's won and things, things that Thomas Jefferson got done. So each kid builds one slide and then they present them together and they get about 30 seconds to present their single slide. It's a great way to move away from the classic uh, lecture to tell you things. So check out Iron Chef. If you just Google... Uh, Iron Chef, John Carippo, you'll see uh, Vicki Davis's uh, interview with me, and there's some really good links there for that uh, website. And so that's the concept of the worst presentation ever. And the goal is, is being bad can be so much fun. So uh, my name is John Carippo. I'm the Director of Academic Innovation for Q. We are the West Coast ISTE affiliate, and uh, I love education, and I love lesson design, and uh, Thanks for letting me share a fun and wacky lesson with you today.